What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Create 0.3 and today we are going to be going over the crushing wheels and setting up a fully automated ore processing setup to go along with that. Now today's setup is actually going to be the most ore processing you can get in Create, which is roughly 2.22 infinitely repeating times ore processing, which I know might not seem like much, but if you want to get the most bang for your buck when you're playing with this mod, then this is how you're going to go about doing it. Now to give you guys a brief overview, there are a couple different ways to set up ore processing and you can start out really early on using a relatively cheap block known as the millstone. And if we come over here and we look at iron ore, you can see that the uses for it, one of those is milling. And if you put it in to the millstone, which again, as you can see here is super cheap, you can get it really early on you are going to get out a crushed iron ore. Now with the millstone alone, you would simply cook down this crushed iron ore and you would get one ingot. So alone the millstone is not actually ore processing if you ask me, or if you wanna classify it as ore processing, it's basically one times. So you're not getting anything special out of this, but if you look at the iron ore, you assume you mill it again, and then you look at washing, which is simply using an encased fan to blow water across crushed ore, you are going to get out 10 iron nuggets, which is already more than you would have gotten if you were to just cook it down, and then you have a 50% chance of five iron nuggets too. So by combining the millstone and washing, you're actually able to get just a little bit of ore processing going on early. Now, once you want to upgrade from that, you will need to progress a little bit in the mod, and that's basically up to where we were last episode because you need the mechanical crafters to make the crushing wheels, and those are going to be the next tier up in ore processing, and that's gonna be where you max out. So if we were to use the crushing wheels and we come back and look, you can see that these not only get you one crushed iron ore, but they also have a 30% chance to get you two additional crushed iron ore, and then a 12% chance for cobblestone, which is actually more of a nuisance than a benefit, but we'll be able to deal with that today. And then obviously we do the same thing. We're going to bulk wash the crushed iron ore and get more iron nuggets. Now I did out the math for those of you that don't care enough to do it, but if we go over the four possible methods of ore processing, starting out from earliest to latest, just the millstone is one times ore processing, or again, not even really ore processing. If we have the millstone and washing, it's roughly 1.4 times ore processing. I think it's like 1.38 uh, to be exact. So you do get a little bit of a benefit there. Then if we go to just the crushing wheels, it is 1.6 one times ore processing. So even better there. And then if we max it out at the crushing wheel and the washing of the crushed ore, you're going to get 2.22 infinitely repeating times ore processing. And that is going to be the best that you are going to get with Create. So again, it's really not that amazing, but it's the most bang for your buck that you are going to be able to get with this mod. So you're probably gonna to wanna to set it up because you're gonna be using a lot of resources to make some elaborate builds later down the road. So we're gonna be going over all of that today and we should probably jump into the crafting portion of today's episode, specifically because it's gonna be a long one today. Now, if you don't feel like watching this and you wanna jump into the more exciting portion of the video where we set this up, feel free to skip to the next section. You can also find a timestamp in the description, absolutely no hard feelings. But for those of you that do wanna stick around, here is what we have for crafting today. Now, most of this is actually pre-crafted because we actually set up things like the crushing wheels or we crafted them last episode as an example of how the mechanical crafters work. So the two things that you actually need to make in the mechanical crafters are the crushing wheels and the rotation speed controller. We're gonna need two crushing wheels, two rotation speed controllers. We also need for this setup, two hoppers, three magma blocks, a bucket of water, three levers, one smooth stone slab, or basically whatever slab you want, uh, two large cog wheels, a mechanical press, five chests, two mechanical belts, a basin, nine gearboxes. I think most of them need to be vertical, but uh, we'll have to see. And then five encased shafts and eight regular shafts. So we can grab all those out right now. And then the additional stuff in here is stuff that we can still craft that we have never gone over before. So I simply wanna show you guys the recipe. We're gonna be making encased fans, depots, brass funnels, brass tunnels, and some filters. So we can grab all this stuff out. I think we should have plenty of room because the funnels and tunnels require pretty similar recipes. But we are gonna be making four encased fans. We're gonna be making one depot. We'll be making I believe for this we need 
uh, four sets of brass funnels. We need seven brass funnels, so that would be four crafts of it. And then I want to make sure we don't use it all up because then we need the same stuff pretty much except one additional dried kelp for two brass tunnels, which we need. And then finally, we need three filters. So you can see here everything we need on top of the additional stuff I listed before. Obviously, we need seven brass funnels, two brass tunnels, three filters, and four encased fans. So that should pretty much be all that we need to set this up today. And when I say all that we need, um, yeah, I know it's still a ton. And then I'm actually going to grab out some uh, wood and some dirt just to assist us with kind of navigating around this area over here. Now, this area is totally new. I made it specifically for setting this up because it is relatively long, I would say. It's a pretty large setup, but it's basically the most compact one I was able to come up with. I designed this myself uh, last night, and it took about two hours to get it all working in a relatively compact manner. But we are going to start setting this up by getting the crushing wheels going. And the crushing wheels are really the most important part of this to go over. So if we hold down shift, you can see the stress impact of these is very high. It's eight times the RPM that they're running at. And obviously you wanna run these at a relatively high speed because that is going to directly impact the rate that they process ore. Now it's totally fine. If you wanna run these things as slow as humanly possible, that's totally fine. They will still work. They do not have a minimum speed like the mechanical mixer does, but you are going to have a really long wait time to actually process all your ore. So what we're gonna be doing today is running these at their maximum speed for one encased fan each. And what you need to know is with the crushing wheels, they both need to be spinning at the same exact speed in opposite directions towards each other. So in towards the center. So you're gonna want the one on the left spinning clockwise and the one on the right spinning counterclockwise. So what we're gonna do is start out with a very simple encased fan setup and we're gonna put it right back here. So we've never really gone over this before, so it's a great time to do it right now. So what we're gonna do is place down a magma block. Pretty much, you can use a magma block, you can use lava. Um, we're gonna use magma just because we don't wanna light the entire base on fire. Um, but then we're gonna place down the encased fan on top of it, and if we grab out our wrench, we can very easily just turn this. And if we look at the arrow, we want the arrow facing down, which means that this is now facing into the magma block. And if we put a lever on it and flip that lever, we can see it's now spinning. So at its current speed, it has 64 stress capacity, which means that we are able to run a crushing wheel on this, which is going to have eight stress uh, impact per RPM. Uh, we're able to run that at eight RPM. Now, this is actually not running at eight RPM. I believe it's running at four, uh, which means we are going to want to increase the speed of this. Otherwise, we'd only be using half of this. So you actually have two options here. And we're going to be making two encased fan setups. You could actually make just one and run the crushing wheels both off the same encased fan uh, and run them at half the speed. But who would want to do that? So over here, we're going to do the same exact setup and then rotate this just like that. Throw down another lever. And now these are both going. So... Now what we need to do is take some gearboxes and we are going to grab out our rotation speed controllers. So we're gonna put down the vertical gearboxes right here and then we're gonna put down the rotation speed controllers right on the sides of those. So now we got both these bad boys right here and what these allow us to do is put down a large cog wheel on them and we can actually determine the speed that we want them to go at. So by scrolling right here, we are able to adjust the speed. So the reason that these are really useful here is first off, we just click down the cog wheels right on here and they're gonna look a little bit weird. If we really wanted to, we could clear out these blocks up here. Um, doesn't really matter because this is gonna basically be all covered up anyway. Um, but we'll just collect the cobble from up there. But what we can do now is adjust these so they are running at eight RPM. Now, the important thing is what we talked about earlier though, which is we wanna make sure that these are spinning in the correct direction. So we can see right here, the one on the left, I said is going to need to spin clockwise. And that is exactly what this cogwheel is doing, which means this one is all good to go. But this one over here is also spinning clockwise and that's not right. So one of the amazing things about the rotation speed controller is we can simply scroll down and down and flip into negative numbers. And that means it's going to be going at that RPM in the opposite direction. So right here, these 
essentially look like exactly what your crushing wheels are going to look like. So you can use these to verify that you are in fact spinning in the correct direction before you actually set this up. So they're both going in towards each other, which means we are good to go. So now we're gonna grab out some of the shafts that we have to work with, extend it out one, just like this. And then we're gonna take the crushing wheels and slap them down right there and right there. And you can see now these are going right into towards each other. You actually get particle effects in the middle that almost show like they are grinding up against each other a little bit. That's exactly what we want. So this is essentially completely done back here. We can just cover this up and leave it. If we look at these, we can see the stress impact is exactly 64, obviously eight times eight, which means we are using all of the possible stress capacity of our encased fans. Obviously later down the line, you actually might wanna hook these up to something like a windmill, which can generate way more capacity and run these at a way higher speed so that you process things in the blink of an eye. But for today, this will be sufficient. So now what we need to do is start making the setup that goes around this. So first thing we're gonna do is get the input for the system, which means we're gonna come up here real quick and simply right click in the center of this with a hopper. Now, if we were to place an item in that hopper, which we can do simply from standing right down here, it's going to drop it into the crushing wheels. They will crush it and drop it right down here. And that's the important next step of this setup, which is going to be where the depot goes. So the depot is gonna go right here. And the depot is new to create 0.3, but essentially what it does is it's just a place for your item to get held. And it's actually only able to hold one item at a time. So we're gonna take our second hopper and <laughs> I should shift click it. Uh, if we right click, it actually puts the item down in the depot. So um, nope, like that. So what we're going to do is have the items drop from the hopper into the crushing wheels. They get crushed, then they come into this hopper right here and they put them into the depot and this is where they are going to get washed. Now, the great thing is that the depot is able to hold them for us basically until they get washed, which is exactly what we need. Before, in Create 0.2, we basically had to just blow them across the ground um, and use filters and stuff to prevent them from being uh, picked up incorrectly. So we'll just put a torch back here uh, and cover this up so that we can actually place the rest of this down because now we need to place down our smooth stone slab right here and we are going to put our water right here so we'll grab out the water and the encased fan that's going to go along with that we'll place the encased fan down right there and the water right here now what this is going to do is blow the water across the depot now this is interesting because you actually with the depot have the option of putting it one lower and it will still count as the item having the water blown across it but we're going to put it right here because again we're trying to keep it relatively compact so once we power this encased fan, it will blow water across the top of this and wash the crushed ore for us. So what we're gonna do then is start putting down a bunch of mechanical belts on the other side of this, and this is where all of the ore is going to get carried away. So we actually need to come down here and clear out a relatively large area so that we can work with it down here and we're gonna have two belts running simultaneously next to each other. So we're gonna put down a shaft right here. This is where it's going to start. And the back portion of this is going to be where the actual ore processing itself occurs. The front portion is going to deal with that excess cobble that we just talked about. So we're gonna put another shaft down here and this is where we're going to split it. And then we'll have one running here and one running here. And I actually can't remember the exact distance we need to go, but I think this right here is a relatively safe estimate. We can always extend it later if we need to, but so we'll go like this and like this. So the important thing to note is that by putting additional shafts, these will still spin. So this shaft right here, which is obviously not at the far left or far right, is still going to spin with the same rotation that this is all spinning with, which is going to then transfer it to this right here. Now, the reason it's important that we put that down is it now allows us to put down the different funnels and tunnels and all that, which get attached to these. So the first thing we can do is attach a funnel right here. So when we attach this funnel right here, it's basically going to pull the items off of the depot and put them onto this conveyor belt right here to go alongside this. So the first thing that we need to do 
is filter the stuff that is going to be pulled off because if we were to put items in here, they would immediately get pulled off the depot if we didn't filter them. So that's where our first filter comes in handy. And if we were to go and right click with this, it opens up, you have a bunch of different slots to put different filters in. You can make it a whitelist, a blacklist. You can make it uh, respect the actual data in terms of like durability and stuff. Ignore the data. We don't really care about those. We want it on whitelist and that's it. And now we're gonna go over a really cool trick that you can use if you have something like JEI. Uh, and we're going to want to take the, I guess we want all nuggets with this one. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure that only once it has been washed, is it being pulled off? So we're gonna drag out, and you can simply drag them here so you don't actually need them in your inventory, the four different kinds of nuggets. Now, obviously you have brass nuggets, but because we make brass over in a different setup, we're not gonna be concerned about those right now, but we're gonna have the four different kinds of nuggets, and then we also need to have cobblestone. So we're able to make that, and now this is what we want to get pulled off the depot, because when the crushed ore ends up on there, we wanna pull out the nuggets once it's completely washed. When cobblestone ends up on there, nothing's gonna happen. We're not trying to wash the cobblestone, so we want that to immediately get pulled off. So once the filter's done, we click the checkbox, and then we should be able to just click it right in there. I wanna make sure that this is, in fact, correct. I guess we set all of these, so we just right click again, make sure it's properly set, and there we go. So now the filter is applied to this brass funnel. So the only stuff that it will pull off this depot to put onto this mechanical belt right here is what is currently in this filter. Now the big issue becomes that obviously we pulled off nuggets and the cobblestone. And we cannot send the cobblestone through the same processing setup as we're gonna send the nuggets through to make into ingots. So we need to split those. And the way we do that is with the brass tunnels. And the brass tunnels are going to act like a splitter here where when we send them through one, they would just come out the other side, but now we have two of them. And so it's kind of weird that this one doesn't have the, uh, the curtains there. I don't know why that is, um, but we're going to have two of them. And by setting different filters on these, we can decide what's going to come out which. And so we'll put cobblestone right on this one. Oh, there we go. The graphics are back for it, I guess. Um, and then this one, we can set another filter for it. And this one, we just simply remove the cobblestone and we click check because we only want all the different nuggets to come out this one and the cobble to go on this one. So now the cobble is just gonna come down here and at the end, we'll put it into a chest, but it's not that simple with the nuggets because nuggets really aren't that useful to us. We want them to be in ingot form. So the first thing we need to do is actually use one of these chests to make sure that we are only sending out groups of nine. So what I believe we should be able to do should be right, is it right? It's I think right here. Um, and then if we click down the funnel there and click down a funnel there. So right here, what's going to happen is you're going to get your nuggets out of this brass tunnel and they're immediately going to get picked up by this funnel and put into this chest. And then they're going to be pulled out of this chest on this side to continue along. The only difference is over here, we're not gonna put in a filter, but we're going to scroll up until it says nine. So all the way till it says nine, and there we go. So the point of this, and this is something that when people make this setup, they totally miss out on, is this is important if you want to make sure that when you're processing a ton of ore, even in you know random quantities, you are never going to get your system backed up because the basin is only able to hold, I believe it's 17 items. And so when you have a bunch of nuggets going into the basin, which is going to be the next step, you need to make sure that if you were processing four different kinds of ore and you get a bunch of different kinds of nuggets in there, and let's say you have you know, five of one, four of another, three of one, uh, and a couple of the last one, well, you don't have enough to make a single ingot. So your system is going to stop until you manually come and fix it. So what we do here is make sure the nuggets go into this chest and this chest acts as a buffer until there are nine of that nugget then it will send out exactly nine of it to go along. And that means that we will be sending out every time just enough to crush down into an ingot of that type, making it so that the system will never get backed up. You just might have a couple extra nuggets of each kind sitting in this chest until there's a sufficient amount to actually turn it into an ingot. Now this is really important, again, if you do not want your system to potentially get backed up because it is totally possible, unless you're only processing one kind of ore, 
per setup like this, which chances are you're not doing. So now we have the nine nuggets coming out. It's time for us to put down the basin that they're actually going to get crushed in or put together in. So we can put the basin. I believe it's going to be, uh, I don't think we can put it right here. I think it needs to be right here to be far enough away. And then we're going to click this on. So we have another brass funnel and that should be good to go. And then over here, we're going to click on another funnel and we can simply put another filter. And this one, we're going to put the ingots on. So we're going to come in. We'll just type in the same thing. If I can actually type, get the ingots and then simply drag the four different kinds that we would possibly want all right into here and get the zinc one right there and click it on here. So now what we got to do is put the mechanical press, which is currently, oh, it's right over here. I was going to say it's eluding me, put it right up here. This will smash down on the nuggets, make the ingots. They will come out this side and then finally they can go into chests. So I think I missed the mark by one here. I think we actually want to extend this by one. Um, I don't think because of how the fact that this funnel occupies this right here, I'm pretty sure if we put a chest, we wouldn't be able to put a funnel there. Yeah, okay, so we can't put a funnel there, as I suspected, so we do need to extend these one. Totally fine. Uh, I do want to right-click and get all this stuff back off of these, if it will let me. There we go. Okay, so we need to break the mechanical belt, grab that, break this one, and simply... I know it looks very weird when you break it, um, but we can then move these shafts up one more on each of these, and then just redo the mechanical belts. So there we go. There we go, and we have to reset up these brass tunnels right here. This filter should still be good. Put that right there, and then put the cobblestone right there. So I had to extend them one, that's totally fine. What we'll do now is take the chest, put it right here, put another one right here, and then slap down a brass funnel on each of these. This one oriented itself super weird, but we'll slap that down right there. And these will just accept the items directly to the chest right off the mechanical belts. And this is pretty much the whole setup outside of actually getting the final rotational power put into this. So really all we need to do now is actually uh, generate the additional rotational power and we'll be good to go. So we can do that uh, pretty much anywhere. I think we're going to do it right here. So we're actually going to want to hop back here and set this up. We're going to do another encased fan setup and we are going to just come down here and do it. We probably want it to be, I think we want it to be one lower. Yeah, one lower should be good. So we can grab out the magma block and put it down right there. We can take another encased fan, put it down right there, and then just, nope, I broke that. We gotta get around the side on it so we can actually rotate it so it's facing downward. There we go. And we'll grab the cobblestone off there. Now we can put down a lever on it and we want to make sure that it's rotating in the correct way when we end up getting it hooked up to this. So that's really the most important part. So right now we can see that it is rotating the wrong way. These belts are pulling backwards. Uh, also, if you right click on the basin, uh, it won't have that little shoot that comes out, um, but it is now rotating backwards. So a simple fix for this would be for us to just break this and move it back one, and then we'll put it right here. Same setup we had before, uh, but we're going to use an additional gearbox just so that we can rotate the, uh, or change the direction of the rotation. So we'll get this facing down, yep, just like that, and come up one. We can throw down an additional lever. Uh, so depending on which way it goes for you, you'll have to do this. Um, you might not have to, in which case I think we might need one additional gearbox. We just got to face this the correct direction. And so if we put the gearbox right there, we can now see that it is going in the proper direction. So it'll pull the items along here. Now the next important step is for us to come right back here by the mechanical press. So we just got to work our way right back in here. We got to break some of these blocks. Uh, and we need to now get rotational power up right here. So the way we can do that is simply by coming down here, right clicking with a shaft right here and inserting another one right under the basin. And then we're simply going to take some of the vertical gearboxes and some of the encased shafts. We're gonna put a vertical gearbox right here. 
use the encased shafts to bring it up. And then we're going to place another vertical gearbox right up there. And now we have rotational power going to the mechanical press. So you can see it's not going at a high speed, but we have some going in there. Uh, and then we can just simply fill this in back here and it still looks pretty nice. And then finally, the last thing we need is to get rotational power to this encased fan right here. So to do this, we're just going to come right over here and we're going to break again. I, maybe we should have left this open so that we can make it easier for this to be set up. Um, but if we can actually walk around here, I believe this is going to have to be an encased shaft. So if it wants to orient it properly, uh, always a pain. I might just pick up this water foam. We're trying to work with this right here real quick. Um, but we are going to grab this and we need to bring now this rotational power all the way over to here. So we're going to put down another vertical gearbox and in case shaft and in case shaft. And it appears we are one short. So for now, I'll just use regular shaft. Doesn't really matter. Um, and then we're going to take gearboxes. And if the rotation is nice to us, we can place it like this, a gearbox, place another horizontal one like this. And if we look, you can see that the fan is blowing out right here across from us. We put the water down and you can see the particle effects that it is blowing them out into the depot. And now everything should be done. So we can finally come and cover all this mess in here up just like so. And there, and then we got one more, two more blocks over here and there. So I believe now our setup actually should be done. So I went and grabbed some of the ore that I've been sitting on and not processing, waiting for this time to come. I haven't been mining in a little bit, um, so I haven't really gotten a ton of it, but I've been waiting to process this specifically. So if we are to dump this in up here, we let it go and you can see there's some pretty cool particle effects. It gets crushed. It comes down here. It's getting washed. Now you can see that it's been washed. The nuggets are coming out that have been washed right here. They should come through the other side of this. They should then get picked up by this chest right here. And then you can see that it's pulling nine of them, not all of them, but nine of them are getting pulled out here. They will go into the basin. It'll be just enough for them to get crushed. So this will come down very slowly, smash them, and then they will get pulled out right here. So you can see everything is working pretty flawlessly. Um, unfortunately, I apologize that I have to keep cutting, guys. We are currently in the middle of having a little bit of a snowstorm here, and there's people constantly plowing the roads outside in a super loud and obnoxious manner. So I really don't want to catch that on camera, but I wanted to make sure we had the video out for tomorrow. But you can see everything's working. The ingots are going in here. And you can see that we have, if we move this so that some of the cobble falls down, we can watch as once this continues moving forward, um, it will pull out the cobble and then that will end up going on this one right here and go all the way down to this chest. So no issue processing that at all. So guys, that is going to be it for today on the ore processing. This full setup is pretty much as compact as I was able to get it. Um, it really uses pretty much as little as you possibly can to get this system fully automated and prevent any potential backups. But if you guys obviously have any suggestions on how to improve it or anything like that, feel free to let me know in the comments as I'm always totally up for making any adjustments to this that we possibly can to make it the most efficient setup possible. But Hopefully you guys have no issues setting this up in your world as I definitely think it's a pretty intricate thing to set up. It's one of the first intricate things in this whole series we've done um, with a bunch of this automation, but I think it's a ton of fun. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode and I will talk to you later.